Hi, I'm Nebraska Attorney General Doug Peterson. There's a silent killer lurking in our midst. Silent because no one seems willing to talk about it. Even though thousands of people are treated daily for it in our emergency rooms. In fact, more people die from it than are killed in traffic accidents each year. It's prescription drug abuse and it's rampant in our country. Prescription drugs can be just as harmful as illegal street drugs. These medications are very powerful and if they're taken inappropriately, they can have deadly consequences. If you have questions or concerns about prescription drugs, experienced nurses at the Poison Center are always available to help. Never hesitate to call. But understand that I've been shot three times. I've been stabbed three times. Um, one of the things that I did to help support my habit was we used to go, we used to go rob drug dealers. Taking 60 pills a day at 120 pounds, I'm just lucky to be here. Prescription drug abuse is the number one epidemic, not just in our country, but really all over the world. Prescription drugs are a problem everywhere. 11 to 12 year olds start using prescription drugs because they're easy access. The other reason they go to prescription drugs besides access is they're perceived to be safer. They're prescribed by a physician, typically. They're dispensed by a pharmacist, typically. And so if it's safe, the doctor and the pharmacist would not dispense those medications, so they must be okay to take. We, we frequently see people that have problems with uh, drug overdoses. One of the issues we've been seeing a lot of recently is uh, prescription drug abuse and prescription drug overdoses. You can find uh, prescription drugs being abused uh, in any high school in our area. Uh, and in my opinion, it's an epidemic. At my son's NOAA school, Friday, uh, they had a raid and they arrested three kids and had over $2,000 worth of pills on them. Prescription drug abuse it does not discriminate and everyone is at risk. Addiction feels like you just, you can't get out of bed without taking that pill. Like, it's all you think about. It's the last thing you do before you go to bed. It's the first thing you do when you wake up. Addiction really is something to be feared. Now, I, I think the primary reason is that once someone becomes addicted, they're gonna to have to struggle with this for the rest of their lives. It's not like I woke up one day and just decided that I wanted to be an addict. We think we can control it. The problem is, is we can't. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how big you are, I don't care how strong you are, I don't care how smart you are, the drug will always win. One of the reasons uh, that we need to understand this so carefully is that for every addict there's probably five to ten people out there who are affected by the behavior of the addict. Accessibility is really another big reason why there is so much abuse. Everywhere you go they're sitting on people's counters, they're, they're in people's medicine cabinets Kids can just get them in drawers and they're all over. We don't consider them to be something that could be dangerous to our kids and to our families. Well, we have learned through the past years that kids go with their mom and dads to open houses and go into the bathroom and take whatever pills they can find or go to their grandma's house or aunt and uncle's house and, and take them. And then I also found out elderly people are selling them to the kids to, to make money to, to live on. Prescription drugs are easy to get a hold of. I can go to my mom's medicine cabinet, open up the open up the medicine cabinet while she's not there. I take two pills out. She's never going to know it. And away I go. We would go on treasure hunts, looking in different people's houses, trying to find prescription meds that we could score. If you use, you have the possibility of becoming addicted. And the more you use, the greater the possibility of becoming addicted. And the more frequently you use, the greater the possibility of, uh, of becoming addicted. 
Before you even know it, you can be addicted. It's just, it's so easy. There were so many times in my life that I was going to um, not ever do it again. Wake up in the morning, oh, I'm never gonna do that again, only to three hours later be doing the same thing again. When I see someone who is, uh, is really addicted um, to narcotic painkillers, they don't care about anything other than getting more medication. You'll steal from your parents. You'll sell things that are important to you just to get money to buy the drugs. You will get caught, and it's a federal offense. It's a felony. You'll go to prison. It will ruin your life, and it will ruin the lives of those that love you. Medicine can be a miracle for some people, but it can cause a disaster for others. When prescription drug abuse goes unrecognized, frequently the end result in that is death. So if you self-regulate and self-medicate with a drug that you're not familiar with that hasn't been prescribed for you, you're asking for trouble. When you cross the line from abuse, that is a continuous use with negative consequences, to, to addiction, uh, the door behind closes. So we have, once the person uh, steps into the category of addiction, they're gonna be an addict for the rest of their lives, regardless of what that substance is. Well, I've been clean for 18 years and I'm still working on it. For a long time, they were just called farm parties. A farm party means a pharmaceutical party where the kids go to the party with prescriptions that they've taken from their parents. They dump the prescriptions in a bowl. And they were called mixer parties. And the whole point of the mixer party is like it have a really big like juice bowl. They take a handful of them and chase it with beer. Well, it's Russian roulette. Like I would hear about people passing out or having seizures or having to call 911 because like people are just like not responding anymore. That is the most dangerous thing that kids can do. The outcome could be death too. So that's something that you have to really think about when you decide to take that route too. Uh, frequently they, uh, they'll stop uh, somebody's respiratory drive and somebody will stop breathing their oxygen levels will plummet and then their heart will stop beating. So on the way down the stairs, he says, Dad, I love you with all my heart. I said, I love you too, Dylan. And Noah and I went on to bed and Saturday morning I got up and I heard the TV going downstairs and I thought maybe Dylan had fallen asleep watching TV. And so I went downstairs and he was sitting in his rocking chair and had his hands folded. And I said, come on, bud, we gotta get going. And uh, there was no response. And then I poked him in the side and there was no, resp no response. And then I got down and I listened and there was no heartbeat. Brad was my youngest son. He was 24 years old when he died of an accidental overdose of prescription drugs. Uh, my son died from a combination of acute bronchial pneumonia and toxic levels of methadone. Trey was 22 years old when he passed away. He was in the top 2% of the United States, scholastic-wise. Very, very smart kid, but made one bad decision. and Everything he did or everything he touched seemed to turn to gold. He was always on championship teams. He was always in first place in this event or that event. He was pretty much a normal kid, very competitive, played soccer. Uh, he had an entrepreneurial spirit. I'd never heard of prescription drug abuse until, uh, until it was too late to do anything. He texted the kid that gave him the pills and uh, that night and asked him, is there anything that could happen to me? I don't feel right, there's something wrong and I um, wonder if there's anything that could actually happen to me, and the kid said no. Then he texted another kid, and that kid said no, and then another one. Three kids said no and virtually turned their back on him. They could have called 911, could have called me, could have done anything, and I think Dylan would be with me today. 
I don't want any family to go through what my family's gone through. I don't want any parent to find their son or daughter the way I found my son. Never in a million years would I thought this would ever happen to me and my family. Don't ever think it can't happen to you. People everywhere are being told prescription drugs are safe. After all, they're sitting at home in medicine cabinets. They're prescribed by a doctor, dispensed by a pharmacist, and young people know where they are kept. It's important to know parents are the weak link in stopping the prescription drug epidemic. Stop the silence. Talk to your kids. Secure your prescription medications. The death of any person touches many lives. In addition to making you aware of the problem of prescription drug abuse, the Poison Center wants to remind you not to flush any unwanted, unused, or expired medications. Contact the Poison Center for advice on how to dispose of these medications. If you have questions about prescription drug abuse, call the Poison Center. Experienced registered nurses are available 24-7 to help you in an emergency, or just when you're a little worried. The Poison Center assists people of all ages, and calls are free and confidential. Never hesitate to call.